It was my favorite day. Um, I agree. I th it, was, it was my favorite day too. It, it like started on a high with Opus and it ended on a high. We the day began for us with Duckhorn. We could not have been yes. more welcome. Yes, I should <laughs> say. Could not have been more welcome there. Uh, they not only did we have this beautiful tasting outside. You guys will see the pictures. Plus, we were able to film, so we'll be able to talk a little bit about it in a few minutes. The wine food pairing, again, it was the charcuterie and it had every little item paired with a different wine. Every single person from the minute you walked in was nice. Everybody. Everybody. And had been there Can't generations. The, yeah, our our host. Host. Just, but he was a third generation or something. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I, and I, I love that. That speaks volumes of it an does. establishment. It and does. then this is unusual, and I don't think this was just for us. I'd love to say it was just for us, but. The winemaker came out. Uh, she did end up sitting down with us and chatting. You're going to see that. Oh my um, gosh, I, I don't so want to say nice. interview because it was more like a chat and just a friendly. Yeah. Right. But she brought a decanter with the wine that they were putting into bottles that day, which was the um, 2019 19. cab. Yeah. And it was just, it was so wonderful. She brought the decanter. I think she was going to pour it for everybody, but it ended up staying at our table. <laughs> yeah, it was finished. It was, a, it was, a, yeah. Don't leave it. The only thing she it. said was, I don't care about the contents, but I have to have the decanter back. <laughs> and so probably a smart move, she yeah. says. <laughs> I tease, I tease. But uh, Duckhorn, I have to say that just, I felt like we were, at home because it's very so that country nice. feeling. They have a huge um, wraparound porch, a little oh, cat that like moseys around. Or, I think yeah, it was like kitters or, or something. 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 Yeah. something. So, we love the cute cat. cat. We can't make that cat. Yeah. <laughs> but adorable. And great staff, very homey feeling. And also, I mean, once again, they wine and dined us. I mean, they let us try everything. Everything. Every 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 yeah. I and mean, there wasn't a, like if it, there's a, a, a menu of things and they're like, you want to try this? Sure. And they brought it out for us. Um, I'll say that that was the day that um, I did sign a, a wine club for a change. <laughs> I, because being a distributor, I don't really need to, but Duckhorn has a lot of offerings that are just not enough cases that they can ship outside of the winery. It's only exclusive to the winery. Mm -hmm. And I have to have them because it was delicious. And, and so. And I think it actually ruined my husband because he is obsessed <laughs> with Duckhorn. Uh, you know, I have to throw this out there for the guys uh, because, yes, we are women, we love wine, but men appreciate it too. And Duckhorn has a cool story. I mean, it's it's a more yeah. manlier uh, background than most of the wineries well, we went to because the guy who yeah. Danny Duckhorn, Dan Duckhorn, yeah, yeah. Dan, um, he uh, rolled up with his wife beater on a Harley and he duck hunts and all that, and yeah. now he has a winery. Yeah. And let me tell you, they have very nice affordable wines but they also have you know you can get their uh child which oh, is decoy yes. which is still i just tried for the first time the other day it is fan freaking tastic yeah. that is i call that my wednesday night wine right, right. it's our new go-to <laughs> now well you so. do serve decoy <laughs> we here, do so. we have their sam blanc and their pinot noir yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then now we just yeah. added the merlot the duck horn merlot, yeah so yeah because we loved it so so much, much. So on our trip and then, you know, we find that in the middle of the day, it's wise for us to eat some more food. Yeah. So, uh, this, but we can't afford we, to keep going we, to the really fantastic restaurants that they have there, unfortunately. Yes. So, we went to a West Coast icon uh, known as In N Out Burger. Oh. <laughs> Ordered off the secret menu. And uh, they, uh, you might even see a picture of Donald. They gave us hats, the little, yeah. you know, the little paper oh, hat. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Good food. Um, yeah. Just, you have to you just need a greasy burger and fries. And you, you have to go to in and It's yeah. a staple. You have to. It's a staple. So we are no longer in and out. Me too, so. Well, welcome. We are at Duckhorn Vineyards. Yay! We're excited. <laughs> this is our final day of Napa, so it's a little sad, but we have some really good stuff planned today, starting with Duckhorn! Yeah. Woo! Duckhorn, so let's go check it out. Yes, go! Yes. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Oh my gosh, we are now sitting down at this gorgeous tasting at Duckhorn, trying side by side Merlots, which mm. was their 18, yes. and the, well, actually both of them are 18. One's Three Palms, and one is Atlas Peak. Three and Palms it, is the famous, like, people all hear about Three Palms. They won 
you know, their 2015 vintage, which I do have on my rack at home, is yeah. um, it was Wine Spectator's number one with the only 100-point wine. They did it really? a long time. Yeah, so oh, to wow. do 100 points and also get the number one spot of their best top 100 for the year, it, I mean, after that, it sold like crazy. People were, people were clamoring trying to get a hold of a Three Palms. But it is just always, every vintage, very consistently wonderful. Yes. Yeah. We were just talking with Miguel, our uh, wine host. steward today, mm -hmm. our host today. They brought us some gorgeous, gorgeous cheese Charcuterie. plate for us. Um, but he was telling us that last year, they, the mm -hmm. wildfires were literally the next mountain sort of hill over. And Dan Duckhorn mm -hmm. went and bought an old fire engine. <laughs> because it was a little too close for comfort. Yeah. This place is absolutely stunning. If you get, when you get out to Napa, not if, when you get to Napa, you have got to make uh, an appointment. You make reservations. Sure. You you do. You have to make reservations uh, for at least right now. I don't know if in the future what they're going to do, but honestly, this is gorgeous. We're sitting out here on this yep. outside table with a beautiful canopy. Um, they have a wraparound porch that we'll show you on the, on the video, but it's just, it's amazing. It's very yeah. home, homey feeling, right? It I is. mean, we've been to a lot of beautiful wineries, we've had a lot of good wine, but this kind of makes me feel at home a little yeah. bit. You know, you have a beautiful walkway, outdoor experience. The sun is oh, impeccable today. Oh, it's gorgeous. And there's a little cat running around. Oh, so what's the cat's name again? Uh, Kitty. Crit, right? Kitter, Kitter, Kitteries. Kitteries. Yes. Kitteries or Oh my thank goodness. you for making us one of your stops today. We love um, your no, thank you for no, having us. No, let's really me? fast. Cheers, the uh, female winemaker. Right? Hell yeah. Hello. Come on, ladies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a like, percentage wise of yeah. women winemakers in Napa? I think it's a lot more than it used to be, the obviously. But yes, I mean, a lot's changed in the 22 years that I've been in the industry. Um, I remember a lot of like early meetings, you know, I'd be the only female in the room, right? That's um, awesome, though. So it's, yeah. it's changed quite a bit. Um, we have quite a few of our winemakers and assistant winemakers are all female, Love it. yeah. So That's it's, awesome. It's, it's, That's and you see yeah, just girl. like, the, you know, each year you see the flush of, you know, candidates coming out of, um, you know, graduating and, you know, with various wine degrees. And a lot of them are female. Um, a lot of our seller interns throughout Harvest are female. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's nice to see that. Hey, so. good taste. <laughs> Literally. And the mentorship is like awesome. I love females mentoring. Females. Agreed. Because uh, right, women, so, women always lift other women up. So, Renee, if you don't mind dabbling a little bit, what are we sipping today? So, this is going to bottle today. This is our 2019 discussion. I think you guys had the we 18, did. Yes, right? We did. This is the right. 19. So, this is the 19. I think you'll find the 19's a little bit livelier in terms of acidity. Yeah. 19 was a pretty ideal year here in Napa. Um, it's one of those years that you kind of could just shop your blocks. Like it wasn't super hot, it wasn't really cool. It was kind of like that nice middle ground temperature. So everything like ripened really evenly. You could leave things on the vine a little bit longer for a little more hang time if you felt like it needed a little more yeah. tannin resolution or a little bit more concentration. So it was just kind of like a really even, kind of easy going harvest, which you know, it's kind of a winemaker's dream. So <laughs> yeah, I think you end up with a little bit brighter acidity in the it's 19. It's a little bit more jammier, yep. but I this like is it. going to yeah. bottle, which it's means young. it's going to it's bottle and, and age a little bit, which exactly. means it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. When, yeah. Yep. It's yeah. got a year to go in bottles. So wow. okay. um, it's going to, yeah, there's a little bit of like roughness on the finish, a little bit of tannin that you're picking up that'll kind of round out. It's still yeah. just sweet. So it is. It is. So it is. It is. You, I mean, you go it is. and bottle it, but when does it get released? So it'll be basically a year from, a year from today, like wow. now, basically. So that's so we'll, we'll probably get it. Realize. We'll, we'll probably get it around the, the 12 to um, 14 months a bottle. I'll say usually the, the, um, the holiday season is when new releases come out. I would say sometimes it depends on the, the wine, but I would imagine this would be closer to the holiday season. And when I say holiday, I'm talking like it'll be September, no, August, September. It'll actually be, so we do a, a Kentucky Derby party for our discussion oh, release. We fun. kind of tee those up together. And I will tell you, it is, you ladies should come, everybody should come. Okay. It's like okay. a really so, fun, people get dressed to the <laughs> nines, five hats, tickets, yeah, yeah. and like yeah. really go nuts. <laughs> Um, it's a really fun party, so we kind of tee it up. So it's early May, and that's when we launch our oh, new release. Awesome. So yeah, it's usually around Mother's Day. That's very awesome. Yeah. yeah, we're very big Kentucky Derby because we have the um, Preakness, Preakness, which in is Maryland. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Which was two weeks before. 
Yeah. Kentucky Derby. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, you know, Kentucky Derby is just fun. It's just one of those holidays that's just fun. Yeah. It's a rite of passage as a Marylander. You have to go yes. in the infield at least is that some right? point in your life. Okay. You don't ever remember it, yeah. but yeah. you have to have <laughs> been there yeah. in the infield. It's time travel. Like, like, kind of not coming out. <laughs> that sounds fun. I'll put that on the list. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So this is the 19. Twenty? Is there not going to be a twenty? For no, you there guys? will be a twenty. Okay. We won't make as much as we normally do. Um, there's, so, I have quite a few wines that I'm not going to make in twenty, but the ones that we are making are going to be. So uh, buy your nineteens. Buy your nineteens yeah. and age nineteen. The twenties will be well worth it. Was too. it? Is yeah. the the lack of twenties just because the you know the fires and everything else and the the what yep. they call it, the smoke grape or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I'm sure you know we had two fires that year. The yeah. first one started pretty early. Um, the nice thing is, is that the one that started early on in August was really kind of focused up in the up in the hills. So it really kind of hit. It affected more of our high elevation okay. fruit more than anything. Um, so how Mountain and Atlas Peak kind of got affected early on, and then we had you know a couple months of you know clean air um, and the valley floor fruit was fine. It wasn't until the glass fire hit that really just mm. kind of changed everything. I mean, we almost lost the winery here. Burned yeah. almost they on were, all. Yeah, I was telling yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're looking at the oh, yeah. I mean, burning up on the hill to try and sure. keep it, right? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's obviously they're doing a lot of tree cutting and, you know, things are you know getting green again with a little bit of rain that we've gotten. So it's starting to not be as noticeable, but yeah, that was kind of intense. It was, it was in our backyard and after that it was pretty much. Miguel told us about the fire truck that you guys purchased in order to uh, splash down everything to try to keep it so moist. We, yeah, we hired, a, it was kind of a, I mean, a last minute, just kind of hired a private, you know, firefighter company to just, we thought they were just going to come and like keep an eye on things. Well, it turned out they were like actively fighting a fire, like surrounding wow. this property for that's about amazing. two to three days, which oh, was goodness. kind of nuts. So, and that's wow. over the winery, which I know you guys do have some vineyards around here, but the mm -hmm. other vineyards that you had, you still mm -hmm. were fighting a whole nother fire. Well, I mean, it, it was all in this vicinity, yeah. so it was just kind of, you know, the, in the whole valley, it was just filled with smoke. Yeah. Um, so whether the fire was here or, you know, a little bit up the street, it was still, it was pretty still bad. Selected. So the, the glass fire was kind of a game changer at that yeah. point. We left, um, most of what we had left was just a state fruit, and we left it in the field. So. And you're one of those wineries now that we've talked about this on our vlog before, but you're one of the wineries that opted to just take the fruit that was still good, not the, let's try to fix this, the smoke taint fruit. Um, there's, there's both wineries. Sure, there's sure. There's 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 many different camps actually. There's people that just walked away from day one, um, and you know I, I feel like that's really unfair to the growers, right? Like you form, mm -hmm. you have a relationship with the growers, right? right. And to put 100% on them just didn't feel right either. So if we felt that we could fix it, we would bring it in. Right. Um, and certainly there was stuff that couldn't have been couldn't be fixed. And how do you that out there? Um, so there's a lot of different a lot of different protocols. Um, one that I've used that I like is adding an enzyme and then using an okay. RO technology, which is a type of filtration that mm -hmm. basically allows you to remove it. It has to be in the volatile wow. state before okay. you can do that. So there's there's without getting too technical, there's the bound phenols and then there's free phenols and it has to be free in order for you to remove sure. it. So okay. you have to kind of convert from one to the other. I mean honestly okay. in the last that is so awesome. In the last <laughs> I didn't even know that years, was a thing. we've learned so much about smoke tea. It's, it's pretty interesting. But I think one of the big things that we've yeah. learned as an industry is that it binds to sugar. And that was okay. kind of the mystery of it. You know, I remember the 08 fires up in Mendocino and in, in Monterey that were detrimental to a lot of the Pinot up there and we had no idea that it bound to sugar. And so you would kind of taste it in the cellar and one day it was there and the next day it wasn't and you couldn't tell it was kind of going in and out of this yeah. like weird phase of smelling it and not smelling it and so and it really just had to do with a function of during fermentation there's still sugar present and sure. so you know it changes mm -hmm. as that fermentation proceeds and then if you're using new barrels there's sugars in the new barrels and stuff like that so so many logistics um, to go in there's a, yeah there's a lot of pieces to it but um you know it sounds like a science experiment though i'm sure it is, i'm right? sure even I mean, in the frustration you probably learned a lot and it was kind of exciting to an extent like I mean, you know, okay so how do without I, the excitement right but how do i <laughs> she's like well, maybe how not, do i how do i adapt okay. how do okay. i adapt right we still need to make wine 100 percent. i mean right? it, it's something that was yes for sure an obstacle frustrating sure. but now for the future you probably know how to navigate something like that and hopefully fingers crossed you never have to have do never that again it. never we all want that but climate change it makes you wonder what do you like what's you coming sure. up you i mean the bottom line is, is the more tools you can have in your back pocket the better yeah, right and saying. i always yeah. accept you know the 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 2019 vintages that are super they, easy like sure like it's easier to make wine in those vintages what really puts you to the test is the challenging vintages the right, one that are right. a lot harder right so the cold wet like vintages your first child is so easy they go to right 
Right. The second child's like, right. <laughs> so, so, don't, don't talk about that youngest. They're the one.